This is the new 2024 ASUS ROG Zephyrus G16 gaming laptop, and spoiler alert, it is beautiful. But there's one key thing nobody's talking about, and it's a big one, and maybe a reason why you may not want to buy it. Let's talk specs and features, demo some gameplay, run some benchmarks, and find out if the 2024 G16 is right for you. Let's roll that unboxing. The Zephyrus G16 comes in a variety of builds, but today I'm rocking the model that comes with an Intel Ultra 9 185H processor, 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5X RAM, an RTX 4070 GPU, and a one terabyte SSD. Current retail price on this model is $1,999. They say first impressions are everything, and after unboxing and seeing the build for myself, I've gotta say this may be the best looking gaming laptop yet. In a market saturated by big, bulky, heavy, and loud competition, this unit feels super premium and feels more like a MacBook Pro than a gaming laptop. It's built with an aluminum chassis that comes in two colors, either platinum white or eclipse gray, has a width of about 14 inches, a depth under 10 inches, is the thinnest gaming laptop I've ever tried staying well under an inch when closed, and only weighs about four pounds, which might make it the most portable gaming laptop on the market. Speaking of portable, I'm giving away a brand new set of Rode Wireless Pro microphones to one lucky viewer. All you've got to do is be subscribed and comment what you do with them if you want. Every video between now and April 20th is another chance to win. I'll pick the winner on April 25th. Good luck. Now back to the video. It really is built like an Apple product, but unlike a MacBook, has an RGB backlit keyboard, which does only have one zone, so no customizing individual keys. I found the keys to be comfortable and noticeably quieter than my Logitech G915 clicky keyboard. The mouse is about 6 inches wide by 4 inches deep and is pretty responsive. I've got no complaints, although you'll want to use an external mouse or controller for gameplay. It's got decent connectivity. On the left side, you'll find a power jack, an HDMI 2.1 port, a Thunderbolt 4 Type-C port with DisplayPort 2.1 and Power Delivery 3.0, a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A port, and an audio jack which works as a mic in or headphone out. On the right side, we've got a UHS-2 SD card reader, which will be super important for you photographers and content creators, another USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A port, and a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port, which also supports DisplayPort 1.4 and Power Delivery 3.0. On the underside, you'll find it's mostly covered with vents for cooling, and if we remove the bottom cover, we can get a good look at some of the internals, which include the tri-fan technology for heat management, as well as the custom fiber and mesh heat pipe for dissipation. We've got your SSD on the right side under this cover, a slot for a second SSD on the left side. Keep in mind, however, the RAM is soldered in, so if you need more than the 16 gigabytes this model comes with, you'll want to upgrade to the model with the 4080. In regard to cooling, it uses a liquid metal compound versus regular thermal paste, and when running, I find the fans emit more of a subtle whistling sound. I've seen some reviewers state that the noise is really loud. However, after the few laptops I've tested, I find it to be on the quieter side. Experiences will vary, and whether you think it's quiet or sounds like a jet engine will be based on your experience. It's got six speakers with Dolby Atmos, four speakers are dual force woofers with two tweeters, is high-res certified, and has smart amplifier technology built in. Serious users will have a third-party PC speaker set, studio monitors, or headphones, but when you need to travel, it carries its weight. I'll show off what that sounds like in a bit. On the back of the panel, we have what ASUS calls their slash lighting, and I gotta be honest here, I'm really not a fan of it. I'd much more prefer the strip to have a customizable RGB instead of the random chaotic flash. Yes, you can change the pattern, but they're all pretty similar, or at least have a subtle ambient effect instead of the random strobe-like flashes it bombards you with. On the plus side, it turns off when unplugged, so it won't kill your battery. Along the top of the display, we'll find the 1080p full high-definition camera, which uses a built-in three-microphone array system, which can be accessed from Armory Crate and allows you to switch the microphone between cardioid directional mode to record directly in front of the mic, stereo enhanced mode for a wider left and right channel, and 360 to record sound from all around. 
And that brings us to the most important part of the build, the 16 inch 240 Hz 2560 by 1600 p ROG Nebula OLED display. It's not touchscreen, but it is glossy, although when we compare it to my MSI MAG 341 CQP, it's not quite as glossy. Either way, reflections shouldn't be an issue, and thanks to its glossy screen, you should get really vivid images. It's totally built for gamers and creators. For gamers, you get a 2 millisecond response time, G-Sync to reduce tearing, stuttering, and reduce input lag. It supports HDR and variable refresh rate, and has VESA Display HDR True Black 500 support and Dolby Vision. For creators, it's Pantone Color Validated and has an sRGB color gamut of 100%, Adobe RGB at 97%, DCI-P3 at 98%, and a Delta E under 1. It's got an advertised 500 nits of brightness and has measured in at 418 nits, and in all honesty, when compared to the typical IPS displays most gaming laptops have, it's the best display I've personally seen so far. But how will it perform in actual use? Let's run some gameplay with power settings set to performance and see how long that 90 watt hour battery will last from fully charged. We'll start at 3 p.m. and see where it's at at 4 p.m. Let's start by running Halo Infinite and see how loud the fans get. Juliet. I think we're ready to claim it. And after running the laptop unplugged for an hour, the battery has 8% of power remaining. I also wanted to see what the internal temps would look like after that hour, and as you can see, the CPU temp is between 90 to 97 degrees, while the GPU is steady at around 82. While Halo Infinite doesn't allow DLSS, I managed to get an FPS around 70 with a high of 82 with settings on high. In Horizon Zero Dawn with DLSS and settings on Ultra, I managed an average FPS of 88, and in Forza Horizon 5 with DLSS and settings on Ultra, I hit 87 FPS. In Cinebench R23, I got a single core performance score of 1892 with a multi-core performance score of 16,069. I also ran a few Blender benchmarks. Here are the results. So after all that, I've got to say if I had to pick a gaming laptop right now to spend my money on, it would be one of these ASUS variants, most likely the 4080 version with 32 gigabytes of RAM. So what's the big problem no one's talking about you really need to consider before making your purchase? It's the fact these laptops only come with a standard one year warranty, which means after your 12 months is up, you'll have no protection against OLED burning. Now I called in and spoke to someone in laptop support and chatted with a customer service agent, both who confirmed this. With the new wave of QD OLED monitors being released, coming with a three year burn in warranty and panel replacements, I just assumed that the OLED laptops are going to come with protection as well, but no such luck. And if you plan to put a lot of hours on these panels in Photoshop, Premiere, or even games with a heads up display that stay on screen for hours, you'll really need to consider if the risk is worth the reward because yes, these are beautiful displays, the best I've seen, but if those displays get burned in, you're going to be stuck with a beautiful static image. Now let me know how you feel about these Zephyrus models and whether the burn-in risk is a factor or non-factor to you and whether you're going to pick one up. If there's a better competitor out there or a product you'd like to see on this channel, let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to use my link to support the channel, but that's going to wrap things up for today. I'll see you next time.